Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's job search basics on navigating the federal job search. My name is Taylor, and I will be presenting some key information on navigating that federal job search. So to get started, when navigating that federal job search, USA Jobs is going to be your primary resource. This site hosts the majority of federal job listings, allowing you to explore opportunities across all federal agencies. If you're interested in working for the federal government, USA Jobs is going to be that good starting point. However, I, I know I just said all government agencies, however, but there are, there are some agencies, particularly those within the intelligence and defense sectors like the FBI or CIA that post openings exclusively on their company website. And that's where you would also be going through the application process, which can slightly differ from USA Jobs process, like the hiring process and application process. So if you're interested in these fields, it's going to be really important to visit the respective agency sites to find their specific requirements and their application instructions, as they may have some pieces of information that you might have to require on, on the resume specifically for that agency that might not be from USA Jobs or another um, intelligence related type agency. Additionally, it's always beneficial to research the agency you're applying to, even if it's outside that intelligence community, whoever you're applying with within that federal government, it's going to be really important that you conduct thorough research, visit their website, understand their mission, their vision, their values, as well as their office locations, just to ensure that, you know, when you're searching, is this going to be a good fit for you? Will you have to relocate? It's just going to be really great identifying information, and that's going to be really crucial as a part to, as a part of that job search. Familiarizing yourself with the agency's culture and, and their objectives can help you tailor your application and to better prepare for those interviews when that time comes. So again, for most of those federal applications, it's going to happen through usajobs.gov. It's going to be that primary tool that you use. And to get started with that federal job search, the first and most important thing is in this step is to create a strong profile on usajobs.gov. This profile serves as a foundation for your federal applications, allowing you to store essential details about your work history, your education, your certifications, your overall qualifications. A well-completed profile not only saves time when applying, um, but also helps present your, your present and most current qualifications accurately across your application. So it helps keep everything together and uniformed current and up to date. And as a part of building your profile, make sure to complete all those sections thoroughly and accurately. This will allow USA Jobs to autofill some of that information when you're going through that application process. So this can also help save some time and will allow you to focus your energy on tailoring your federal resume because that is that is also a process in itself that we're going to talk about here in a moment. But it's just really important to keep that profile strong and keeping it up to date so that way it can help you along on that application process. And using that federal resume format is going to be required for the federal job application. So federal resumes are a little bit different than that, well, a good <laughs> bit different than that private sector resume. The federal resumes are typically three to five pages in length. And when I say this, don't feel overwhelmed like, oh, this is a really long resume. There's going to be a lot of content. A lot of it comes down to that formatting style because it is going to be formatted a little bit differently than that private sector resume. It's also requiring very key specific details on the resume, including um, average hours worked per week, um, precise start and end dates, which means including the month and year for each position, optional sections such as supervisor information, um, preferences, citizenship, like there, there are some different components that are going to be required, employers' addresses. So it's really important to understand that when I talk about that page link, a lot of it comes down to that required component, those qu required pieces of information required on that federal resume, along with those optional pieces that you might want to include on that resume. Therefore, it does make it a little bit longer in that link, but are going to be essential when going through uh, building your federal resume. So the 
the resume builder on USA jobs found in that document section of your profile. This is what I'm what we highly encourage students and alumni to check out when they begin their job search, because this helps ensure like if you build your federal resume on USA jobs, it's going to help ensure that your requirements are the requirements that, that they have are going to be met in the preferred format, as well as those specific details that I was mentioning are going to be included on that resume. But this can be found in the document section of your profile. Um, keeping your federal resume up to date is going to be important. And it's also important to know that in your profile, you can create up to five different resumes. And keep in mind that none of these resumes are going to be searchable by default. However, you can make one visible to recruiters to view as a general resume and potentially invite you to apply for positions as they are going through um, you know, potential candidates for positions that they are hiring for. So this could be a way to keeping um, keeping your search option, sorry, keeping your search options open and being visible as that passive job search strategy that you might want to provide for yourself and also helping ease that job search strategy, knowing that you have this tool available for you. It's also essential to keep your profile and resume updated as you gain new certifications, complete academic programs, or take on new responsibilities, whether that's in a volunteer role or in your current work position, internship, keeping all of your information current up to date is going to be essential. I know I mentioned this just a few moments ago, but that's why it's so important because you want your most current qualifications to quickly stand out to these employers and recruiters so that way they can see that you're qualified for these positions that you're seeking or applying for. So regular updates help maintain an accurate and competitive profile for you that reflects your current qualifications. And now we're going to talk about tailoring that resume. So tailoring your resume to each job is also a crucial step in the federal application process. And as you're going through this job search, because as you go through the different job announcements, it's going to be really important that you are meeting all these minimum qualifications and the eligibility specified in each job announcement, because it's going to be required that you meet these in order to advance into that next hiring process, into those next steps. So these qualifications must be clearly reflected in your resume, including relevant licenses, certifications, training, and experience. Additionally, ensure that your resume aligns with your responses to the application questionnaire, as this is also going to help prove that you meet those qualifications that they're seeking. So all of this is say you have to tailor your federal resume to each job announcement that you're applying for because they're going to have different qualifications and eligibility requirements depending on that role, depending on that GS level. So it's going to be crucial to tailor that federal resume. And if the hiring team and when I I emphasize the tailoring part because if that hiring team doesn't see that evidence that you've met all those required qualifications or meeting that eligibility, you might not move forward into the hiring process. So again, it's really important that all of your qualifications are presented onto that resume, that you are meeting those eligibility requirements because this is gonna help save you time and uh, making sure that you're applying for these roles that you are qualified for um, and meet those eligibility requirements eligibility requirements for, but making sure that resume uses specific examples, demonstrating what it is that this, this role, this job company is seeking for in a candidate. And to learn more, I know kind of got a little deep into that, but to go a little bit deeper into that federal resume writing process, feel free to check out our group coaching sessions that we hold, that that are held. Uh, our senior career coach, Rachel, she typically hosts these once a month. So feel free to go into career link and look for some upcoming events. USA Jobs also holds different events throughout the year when it comes to writing that federal resume. So keeping an eye out on their website can be really helpful, but we also provide resume reviews at no additional cost for our students and our, and our alumni. So if you are creating that federal resume and want a second pair of eyes to look over it, you can always send it into resume help at APUS.edu and we can support you and guide you in creating that solid and strong resume, that strong federal resume for you as you go throughout this process. Research and, and, and identify positions. This part is 
the part that might be the most overwhelming in that job search process when it comes to federal employment. But that's okay because there's resources and tools to support you here in Career Services. We're here to support you throughout this process. So if you're just starting your federal job search and aren't sure how your skills and experiences translate to those federal positions, Again, don't worry, there are several resources to help you identify your strengths and align them with potential roles. Working with a career coach can be incredibly valuable in this process as we can help guide you in assessing and understanding what your skills for the federal job market are, what, you know, help narrowing down what your interests are, how does your background experience align with these future roles that you're looking to gain or move up and grow in. So we can be here to support you. But there's other tools like self-assessments out there that are free resources available like careeronestop.org is an excellent platform offering skills assessments and a wide range of job seeking tools. So please note that this specific platform, it won't match your skills directly to these federal positions. But I mentioned this resource because it can potentially give you a clear picture of what you bring to the table from your past and current experiences, education and training to help kind of align with those federal roles that are out there and may be in demand. And there are a couple other useful resources, which include MyNextMove.org and MyNextMove.org for veterans. And I highlight this, I highlight these two resources because they can help explore career options and generate ideas for job titles out there that you might not necessarily have thought of. Um, it can just help expand that job search. So this resource uh, specifically for the veterans can allow veterans to input their MOS code to receive tailored suggestions based on their skills and experience um, based off their MOS. So I'll also share, I know I mentioned a few of these, but I am going to drop in those links here at the end of today's presentation. Um, to share these resources with you so that way that you have them and have access to them, um, it's readily available for you. And once you have a good sense of your skills, start researching those federal positions that align with your abilities and interests. So you've taken the skills assessments, you have met with a career coach, whatever it is that suits your needs or your preference, you've, you've done that self-assessment, you've identified what you, what you want to do or at least that general area. USAjobs.gov, again, is going to be that primary source for those for searching those federal job openings. So you can use USA Jobs search filters to narrow down positions by factors like location, agency, job type, and series. And there are several others that I'm going to go over as well. But just to give you a general idea, there are a wide range of filters located on USA Jobs. So I know I just mentioned series. If you're not quite familiar with series numbers, they can be a really great shortcut to finding those relevant jobs that interest you. So to look up series numbers, you can Google OPM occupational series list, but I'm also going to drop in that link here at the end. So these series numbers align with some different industries and those different jobs that can be out there. And once you find that list, you can search for those series numbers that interest you viewing the results, how they correlate with um, the, again, those industries. And then you can put those numbers within USA Jobs as you go to search versus like using different keywords. You would have that number that covers that family of um, jobs within a specific industry. So this is really helpful to narrow down that job search and to get more specific for what you're looking for. But also, if you are kind of scrolling through those job announcements, trying to figure out what you're interested in or you're finding some different roles that interest you on the job announcement. On the right hand side, there are also the, the series numbers are also listed. So I encourage you to take a note, take note on what that number is, jot it down and be able to come back to it for reference. So that way you can add that to a part of your job search when finding that right, that perfect role for you. Another helpful filter is that hiring path. So if you haven't heard of this one before, it refers to specific categories like Schedule A for individuals with disabilities. Other hiring paths include opportunities for veterans, graduates, military spouses, and then um, the general public. So you can filter out what which one would meet your needs. So these filters can help narrow down your search. 
or it could also potentially open it up to more opportunities depending on your eligibility. So say you're a military spouse, you're looking for those public options, um, you know, you would be able to select both of those filters and maybe you're even a recent graduate. So you'd be able to add those and see what comes available for you in terms of those searches. It can help narrow it down to show you what you could be qualified for. So that's what I mean by by doing those filters. But maybe you are someone with a disability. You want to see what roles are open to those individuals with disabilities. You can just select that filter and it's going to narrow it down for you. Um, and what roles might be a good fit for you. And I mentioned this because it is such a great resource to narrowing down those roles that are open, but also broadening some of those options available to you as well based on those filters. You can also filter by appointment type. So you might be looking for a summer job or a full-time job. Maybe you're looking for that internship, work schedule, pay, location. Like I said, there are so many options for these filters. Finding what's going to be best for you to really narrow down what is going to be the best fit is going to be helpful in this job search because there are so many job options available narrowing them down will be less overwhelming for you as you tackle on this job search. So filters are essentially going to be your best friend when navigating the vast number of job listings on usajobs.gov. And once you determine some of the jobs to search for, you've, you've identified some series numbers, you have identified some keywords to search in there, you've gotten your filters down, Next is going to be carefully reading each job announcement to understand that those positions requirements. Again, in the federal hiring meeting, all minimum qualifications is going to be mandatory. So again, it's going to be really important that you emphasize on your resume and application, addressing the points that are on that are on the job announcement to maximize your chances of moving forward in that hiring process. So fully reading through the job announcement, identifying those qualifications. There are also um, a, there's also a questionnaire that can go along with some of these announcements. So reading through that, ensuring that you're going to meet everything that's being asked for on that questionnaire. And those will be things that you include again on that resume to better tailor and demonstrate that you have what it is that they're seeking. So that's gonna be really important when you're reviewing those current job announcements is really thoroughly reading through each one, ensuring that you're also going to be interested in the position. Is this something that really interests me? Can I see myself doing this? Is this where I want to take my career? Um, so really doing some self assessment in terms of the, you know, reviewing those job, those job openings. And I encourage you to also take advantage of the option to save your searches and set up notifications through your USA Jobs account. Uh, you can send, you can save specific search parameters such as job type, agency, or location. Enable those email alerts so that way you're notified as soon as relevant jobs are posted. This can be really beneficial, especially if there's not a large window open for some applications. Sometimes there's some smaller windows, so knowing as soon as possible can be helpful to ensure that you get your application in on time and well, also just submitted. So before that closing date, but being being proactive and taking those steps can really help maximize that job search. And again, with all those jobs listed on USA Jobs, setting up that passive search like that can also help streamline your job search because then they're automatically coming to you, you're automatically being notified. So it's just helpful. It's a helpful step to take when you're when you're doing those um, when you're taking on that job search process. Networking, seeking guidance. This and there are so many important things when it comes to the job search, with, especially within the federal process. But networking is extremely is a, an extremely important process because as you go through the job search, it's going to be really crucial to network and seek the guidance of others, especially those in the field. Whether you're working with a career coach, connecting with others in the career field, or utilizing resources for veterans or military spouses, the more people you have helping you, the broader reach you will be, the more visibility you're going to gain, whether that's with recruiters or hiring managers or somebody who can just be that connection for you within an agency. The more people you can gain insight from is going to help shape how you approach your job search, how you present yourself to be that competitive candidate and how you ultimately prepare for that interview once you get through that process. So 
and I did mention military, but it, also if you're not connected with the military, please don't worry because there are, again, there's still plenty of resources out there to help support you. Some of the ones I just mentioned, like career fairs, um, employer webinars, career coaching, careeronestop.org, LinkedIn, which can also provide valuable tools. So for there are just resources available, support supports in place to help you be successful in this job search. And with networking and seeking guidance as that key to it is really key to improving your job search for some of the reasons I've just mentioned. But the Office of Personnel Management website, so OPM.gov, it is a really helpful resource for understanding the hiring process. So if you are because right now we're kind of just going over the surface of, um, you know, the key the key points of that federal job search. But if you want to dig in a little bit deeper, which I highly encourage you to do, that way you're fully informed. I highly, highly encourage you to check out reliable resources um, for really understanding that federal hiring process, which can be found again on opm.gov. I encourage you to check that out and seeking some different guidance that could be available within that networking system. Also check out, I mentioned this earlier on in the presentation, also check out the events page on usajobs.gov regularly because this page includes some free opportunities like um, career fairs, in-person career fairs, informational sessions, interviews with professionals within those various industries. Um, employers come and speak about the, you know, setting yourself up for success within their company, talking about their company mission and values. So really understanding what they're looking for, what they are about to ensure that you know, this might be a company you've dreamed of working for, but you hear a little bit more about them and you might you might reassess. And that's absolutely OK. But that's what that's good for. That's why networking is so important. So you can just have have a vision of what or have you can reassess your expectations for some of these companies and some of these roles. And also say, yes, this is my dream company. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And then gain that insight from your network of how do I position myself? So many of these events. Again, are they're, they're designed to help you better understand through USA Jobs events. They're, they're there to help you better understand the federal hiring process and how to become a stronger candidate for those open roles, whether it's now or in the future. In addition to these resources, attending those networking events, scheduling informational interviews with those professionals in the industry, seeking guidance from mentors or individuals who have successfully navigated that Federal hiring process can be extremely beneficial with giving some insight onto the process. And it's important to keep in mind that while connections are helpful, it is important to vet your sources carefully. So I say this because advice from peers is so helpful. It's it's very insightful, but always consider that reliability of their information. Things change throughout the years. Expectations change. Um, requirements and qualifications change. So it's really important that the information you get is reliable. It is current and really understanding who that information is, like really understanding what that information is being given to you and knowing that it's coming from a real, like it's, it's supported information that you are being given. So that way, you know that it's something that you can rely on moving forward. And then LinkedIn. So when it comes to networking, LinkedIn can also be a really great tool for networking, joining relevant groups um, such as for veterans, military spouses, industry specific fields, reaching out to people who have walked again, walked that path before you. So if there is a specific job you're interested in, which I understand when it comes to LinkedIn, finding connecting with some of these um, uh, professionals can be a little bit harder, especially with those who um, hold more of those security clearance type positions. However, there are some of those leaders that are out there who are available on those networking sites. So I encourage you to reach out to them, provide them with your elevator pitch and ask questions, learn from their experiences, gain that insight, check out their profile, see where they started, see how they got to where they are. Utilize that as a tool for you um, in building up who you are in that candidate and to prepare you for that job search. Leveraging these resources and networks, you're going to be able to be better equipped to navigate this process and increasing those chances of your knowledge and success when it comes to gaining that gaining the federal employment. And now I want to kind of go over understand the application process when it comes to this job search, because it it can be a, a lengthier process than, than the private sector employment. So it's, it's important to kind of just gain an overview. But again, checking out 
um, those reliable resources on the exact methods, the exact steps to take, um, how the whole process goes, it's going to be really important that you do your due diligence in researching that. So that way, again, that you're informed about what you can expect going through the, the application process. But just kind of as an overview, after submitting your application, there is going to be that waiting period. You know, you, you submit it and now it's going to go through the system, which is going to perform um, a type of automated review, evaluating your resume and the questionnaire responses to determine uh, if and how well you meet those qualifications, possibly doing, depends on how the system is set up. It might go through like a rating system um, to ensure that you are one of the most qualified candidates to be moved forward in the application process. So if your application gets through that, that automated initial step based on those qualifications and compared to those other applicants, it should then move into a manual type review by HR specialists. And this is really assessing that elig those eligibility factors that you see um, with veteran statuses or US citizenship, whatever those requirements are that are mentioned on that job announcement, it gets a little bit more into the nitty gritty um, with the review. And when going through this process, it's important to understand that there is, um, and there's, some, there's a link up there, but there is a difference between the eligibility, which is whether you meet the certain basic conditions and, and then the qualifications are where your skills, education, experience align with those job requirements. So this is really an essential part of that application process and understanding the eligibility versus qualifications because there is, there is a difference between the two. But again, that's where researching and becoming more informed throughout um, with this process is going to be really important. And once HR has completed its review, the qualified candidates are then referred to the hiring manager. And although this doesn't guarantee an interview, it can show that you've met or exceeded those qualifications in which that employer is looking for for that specific position and then be reevaluated on then the higher manage, managers can then go forward and evaluate those applicants that have been passed on to them. So as you can see, there's it's a very tedious process so far um, and the steps that it goes through. So once the, and then, you know, once the hiring manager selects those interviewer, uh, the interviewees, hopefully you are one of the ones that are going to get to go in and complete that interview. But upon completing those interviews, the hire manager may extend a conditional job offer, and this offer is usually pending on successful completion of like the background check. If you have to have a security clearance, making sure that all of that goes through and is approved. Typically, that includes reference checks. And this this process, there could be more to go. There could be more that has to go under review upon that conditional job offer. But what I just provided was just kind of some of the basics that tend to that will be checked. Um, through that application process, through that hiring process. So once that's done, you get that. And then after passing all the requirements, such as that background investigation, you pro you've provided all that necessary paperwork and you're approved and cleared for employment, that's when you should then receive that final job offer as long as everything aligns and works out as, as it's supposed to. And that's when the official offer can come in with your salary, um, benefits, and all the wonderful parts of starting that new job and this is where you then get to decide if you're going to accept or decline that position is it going to be a good fit for you um but that's a that's a whole nother webinar in itself but that's kind of the overview of that application process for that for the federal government so again that's just a it's just an overview of how that can go i highly encourage you to check out some of the websites there on the screen to gain some more insight and information for the uh, more, I guess, more in-depth application process. So that way you can understand and be informed moving forward about what to expect and how, again, how that specific agency will want to go through their interview process. How will they select their qualified candidates? Because it's all going to depend, depend based on that agency and what it is that they're looking for and what their expectations are and how they want to conduct that application process. And as we come to an end, a final reminder for this presentation is to remain patient and be persistent because when navigating the federal application process, it can be lengthy, it can take time. Even if you've done everything like you're supposed to, you've done everything perfectly, 
you found that perfect job, you've submitted the perfect application, it's flawless, um, you've completed all the necessary steps, the process can still take several months to fully hire, onboard, and start in your new role. So if something, and something I hear often from students and alumni is when should I start my search? Uh, you know, still my degree program. Well, that's okay. The federal government, it does take some time. So if that's what you're looking for, it doesn't hurt to start searching now. Getting kind of in that rhythm of what to expect, put some feelers out there. It's okay to start trying um, a few months out if that's something that you're interested in, if that's where you're at right now in your job search or depending on where you're at in your academic program. It's okay to start kind of earlier on because of the time that it might take. So something else when you are going through this job search process, and again, just kind of as a reminder and recap, stay on top of your applications, track your progress by checking your USA Jobs account regularly, view the status of your applications, because this is going to help you stay organized and avoid losing track of any potential opportunities or next steps in that application process and that you're staying informed throughout um, the whole process. So most of all, again, remember that applying for federal jobs is going to be kind of a longer term type process on average. I mean, ideally, it's a shorter process for you. Uh, and I hope that happens if, you know, you find that perfect fit. But just expectation wise, understand that going into this, it it will likely be a little bit of a longer process from start to finish. So remain patient, keep moving forward, keep trying as you go through this job search and the application process. And I want to thank everyone for joining in on today's job search basics webinar on navigating the federal job search. I am so happy and we are so happy to assist you as you journey through reaching your career goals. Please, 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 please do not hesitate to reach out to Career Services. You can do this through um, the form found on your eCampus. You can reach out via email, as you can see up there on the screen, careerservices at apus.edu. If you are seeking that resume help, I mentioned this earlier on in the presentation. Feel free to send your resume to resume help at apus.edu. We're happy to provide you with, with feedback and suggestions and help guiding you through creating that strong resume. So please don't hesitate to reach out. 